Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, and now HCAT in Holliston. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad for the broadcast. Connor Donovan, our cameraman this evening, as 10 and 0. Lowell Post 87 takes on 10 and 3. Ashland Post 77. It is the fifth game of the week for Post 77, and so far it has been a great week of Ashland Legion Baseball as they have four wins and one loss on the week, and things are looking more and more like Post 77 will be able to clinch a playoff spot very soon. Let's take a look at the Lowell batting order. Leading off and playing center field is Joey Sanchez. Ray Velasquez, the right fielder, will bat second. Anderson Jimenez, the shortstop, hitting third. John Donovan, the catcher, hitting cleanup. Thomas Hassett, the first baseman, hitting fifth. Batting sixth and playing left field, Zach Gishier. Harrison Silva, the third baseman, hitting seventh. Aiden Foyle, the DH, hitting eighth. Max Gilman, the second baseman, hitting ninth. Matt Draper out of the batting order. He's the pitcher for Lowell, post 87. As I welcome in my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, to tell us about the Ashland post 77 defense. Lou Rossi back from his trip to UMass at third base. Shortstop Jackson Hornung. Cole Glassburn at second. Zach Peston at first. Left to right, Dominic Kavanaugh, Brad Seymour, Ben Thomas, John Jewett catching Lucas Gustafson. As Joey Sanchez steps in to face Luke Gustafson. And the first pitch is ball one, a one and oh count. Luke Gustafson has been one of the premier pitchers for Ashland Post 77, and they are relying on him to try to work his way through this tough low lineup as that one's fouled off. One and one count. Watching him warm up, I can understand why Tufts University wanted him on their ball club. Fastball, curveball, changeup. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the right side, takes a couple hops on the grass, picked up by the first baseman, no problem. As Zach Peston able to get the job done, a three unassisted for out number one. That'll bring up Ray Velasquez, the right fielder. As Ray steps in. It is a beautiful 84 degree day here this evening for Ashland Legion Baseball. As Velasquez puts this in the air over to right field and foul. Lowell defeated Ashland the last time these two teams met at Lowell's facility, nine to five. Lowell plated eight runs in the sixth inning of that game. That's a Yabat game. Yep, as this is driven into center field, that'll get down, it's going to be a one out Base hit for Velasquez. That'll bring up Anderson Jimenez, the shortstop. Watching Lowell take infield, uh, they probably didn't realize it, that the uh, infield is haunted, but they will tonight for sure. They certainly will. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. A lot of life on Gustafson's fastball. Weather could be an issue tonight. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on the clouds. Some pop-up storms around the area. Swing and a miss there, 0-2. We've had a very clear week all week long. No weather issues whatsoever, but tonight could be a little bit of an issue. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, it wasn't expected uh, to storm at all, but some pop-up storms have shown up as that one's fouled away. Flash that curveball. Luke Gustafson has thrown 19 and a third of an inning for post 77 so far this season. Three wins, no losses. He started all three of those games that he won. A 1.81 ERA. It's been a tremendous season on the mound for Gustafson. Checking at first, runner back safe. I'd say he's pretty good with a 1.81 ERA. I would say so too. Gossipson set to deal, looks at first, checks in, nearly got him. 
Good pickoff move. Started him off with a dummy move and then went with his best stuff. Well, Coach Johnson mentioned that he wanted this game bad after what Lowell did to him the first time around as the runner takes off from first, the tag. And he's out of the baseline. Dragged him off the bag, but then he got him after. Wouldn't have mattered. He was out of the baseline yep. after that point. So Velasquez is out of the baseline, and he's caught stealing two away. Third time in now two games, Sean Jewett. He's got runners swiping on him. I think if you do your homework, you're going to realize you should not test Sean Jewett. That pitch down low. Block that with a thug. His fifth game catching this week. He's got to wear on your legs, but he claims he's good. He's, he certainly seems good. He had some great plays against Waltham in Thursday's victory. That pitch down low. It's a three and two count now on Jimenez. Lined up and the pitch. And this is hit foul up the right side. Nice catch by a fan out there, a bear hander. Well, the other fans had their hands on their heads. He's saving some spectators out there. It's him or nothing. You think we can get him to uh, watch the game over here so he could protect us, Larry? Sure, especially from left-handed hitters. Lined up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. There, strike three, out number three. Luke Gustafson loving it. We'll head to the bottom of the first. You're tuned in to Ashland to Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM. Bottom of the first inning, Ashland post 77 coming up to the plate. It's a scoreless game between Ashland post 77 and Lowell post 87. Let's take a look at the Ashland post 77 batting order. Ben Thomas playing right field, leading things off. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, hitting third. Tom Cavanaugh, the left fielder, hitting cleanup. Ronan Bates, the DH, batting fifth. Sean Jewett, the catcher, hitting sixth. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, hitting seventh. Zach Peston, the first baseman, hitting eighth. Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, hitting ninth. And we'll get you the Lowell Post 87 defense right now with Larry Sacklad. Starting at third base tonight, Harrison Silver, shortstop. Anderson Jimenez, there's a ball upstairs. Second base, Max Gilman. First base, Thomas Hassett. Thomas Hassett. Zach Cashier, left field, rumble of thunder. Ground ball to second base, and that's going to get through. The haunted infield. It's a base hit. Lead off single for Ben Thomas. In center field, Joey Sanchez. Right field, Edgar Velasquez. Johnny Donovan behind the plate. And catching Quinnipiac University new player, Matt Draper. And now stepping in is Lewis Rossi, the third baseman. Runner on, no outs. The bunt pulled back. Runner thought about taking off, but thought twice. Harrison Silver is now, maybe they do have a scouting report on Rossi. He's playing very close in. And this is a bunt up the first base side foul. Well, I'll tell you, Ashland has already had four games this week, but this is the one they want the most right here against Lowell, a team that they were winning against for the majority of the first game, but then fell apart in the sixth inning from a pitching standpoint and gave up eight runs. The Yabat game, right? That's right. The bunt fouled away, one and two. Lewis upset with himself. Really wants to push the runner up to scoring position. Third baseman paying e playing even with the bag with two strikes. Outside, two and two. Lewis Rossi just never seems phased up there. He's my favorite player. He's tough. He's nails. And there's a called strike. He's out. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, will step in. Now, do you agree with the bunt there, or you just let him swing away? Well, Coach Johnson knows it's going to be a low-scoring game, so he's going to play small. There's a strike. 
Jackson Horning on the week was one for nine heading into yesterday's game, but now is three for nine with three RBIs, three runs. Had a couple of walks yesterday as well. Draper going with the slide step to the plate. Swing and a miss. And that is out number two. Strikeout number two for Matt Draper. Tom Cavanaugh will step in, the left fielder. I guess that's why Quinnipiac wanted this kid. The pitch outside, 1-0. Oh. Tom Cavanaugh hitting a 371 on the season, a 463 on base percentage. Down low, 2-0. I thought we'd see Ben Thomas in motion here during that at bat. There's been no pick attempts. Lead off of first. And that pitch outside, runner taking off from first, and he'll slide into second safely as the throw goes into center field. Stolen base for Ben Thomas, but will it matter with a 3 0 count? Coach Johnson taking note of that throw. I think you just want to see how the catcher looked. It's a good pitch to run on a curveball, so. There's ball four. Four pitch walk to Dom Cavanaugh. Looked awfully close, but we'll take we'll take the walk. Ronan Bates, the DH, will step in. Bates playing in his third game in a row. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Ronan Bates hitting a 111 so far on the season, two for 18 at the plate. Gets a piece of this one, hit in the air, over to right field, and it is dropped! And the lead runner gonna come around, and now a runner coming in behind him. The throw in is going to be cut off, and then the throw home is in time. Post 77 plates a run, Dom Cavanaugh called out at the plate, but it's one nothing Ashland as we head to the top of the second on WACA TV and HCAM. Top of the second inning, four, five, and six, due up for low post 87. John Donovan, the catcher, Thomas Hassett, the first baseman, and Zach Gishier, the left fielder to face Luke Gustafson. Post 77, plates a run in the bottom of the first. A crazy play to wrap up the bottom of the first. Ronan Bates singled into right field, and it was, it was a little misplayed there uh, by the right fielder as well, but in any case, I'll give him the single on that one. And then Ben Thomas came around to score. Dom Cavanaugh tried to come around to score behind him, but was tagged out at the plate on a great throw by the shortstop. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. 0-1 oh, on the catcher and cleanup man, John Donovan. Line up and the pitch. 0-2. Oh, I blame that last out on the uh, on-deck hitter, or lack of an on-deck hitter, to wave him towards the uh, foul line there. I don't think he would have got tagged out. It's fouled away, just stays alive. Gustafson dealing. Line up in the pitch. Yes. Oh. I'm going to say he didn't swing. One and two. Just low. Two and two. That's going to draw some oohs and ahs out of the Ashland dugout. And for you, for you at home watching, should have drew a ooh and ah. Fouled away. Good battle here between the cleanup man and Gustafson. He's setting him up for a curveball. And this is chipped up the left side. Gloved by the shortstop. Throw to first. No problem. Six to three on the out. Peston showing his leather. This week, that'll bring up Thomas Hassett, the first baseman. Oh. 
Ashland has outscored their opponents this week 24 to 8. Team ERA of 2.00. Of two Gustafson clearly not pleased with the umpire's call on that pitch. That one low, 2 and 0. Two O pitch, strike one. That's a payback for the one he didn't get first pitch. Feeling a few more raindrops. There's strike two. Good battle back by Gustafson. And this is fouled up the left side. Lefty lefty matchup here. Something on the inside corner might work. And this is sliced into center field. That'll get down for a base hit, fielded by Seymour, and it's a two a one out single for Thomas Hassett. Nice job of cutting off the ball by Seymour. They'll bring up Zach Gish here, the left fielder. I'll bet his nickname is Gish. <laughs> I could see that. Slay lead at first by Hassett as this one's fouled off, 0-1. Oh Gustafson is picked over twice. Followed into the backstop, 0-2. Lowell showing some aggression. They stole in the first inning and Jewett gunned them out. Runner with a lead off of first, swing and a miss. No, he might have tipped it, he did. Just staying alive there. Checking at first, runner back safe. Lowell coach blocking my view. Did he hold? Apparently so, says the umpire. One and two. Runner with the lead off of first. Swing and a miss. Out number two. Sean Jewett trying to back pick. He was successful last night, but as they usually say, only bad things can happen. Harrison, Rare. Harrison Silva, the third baseman, steps in. I think every base is going to matter tonight, Tom. I think so. Checking at first, runner back safe. There's a strike. Oh, and one on Silva. Gossifson working from the stretch. Fouled away, 0 oh and 2. The future Jumbo has got a lot of life in his hose tonight. The ball dog is on that foul ball. He's been well rested from a pitching standpoint. Just outside, one and two. Nice golden retriever shagging balls.
There's strike three, third strikeout of the day for Luke Gustafson, and that'll do it for the top of the second to the bottom of the inning we go. It's 1-0 post-77 on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the second inning, due up for post-77 is 6, 7, and 8. Sean Jew at the catcher, Brad Seymour the center fielder, Zach Pess in the first baseman. A 1-0 lead for post-77 as the wind starting to pick up. Some storms are in the area. We're keeping a close eye on them. Some pop-up thunderstorms. And this is sliced foul, 0-1. I think the wind's blowing those clouds away. The wind's blowing towards right center. Ooh, chin music. Oh, they're saying it hit him. <laughs> well, you were right, Tom. <laughs> I told you he was going to get hit by a pitch. <laughs> we made a uh, bet on what would happen to Sean Jewett. Larry said that he would go down in flames. Go down in flames. I said he'd get hit by a pitch. Turns out I'm right. I owe you one. Brad Seymour will step in. That's one potato chip. <laughs> That's one I did not expect to get right, though, to be honest with you. I don't think Jewett even moved. Like he didn't turn back to the umpire and say, hey, the umpire made the call. I think you could throw seven baseballs 90 miles an hour at him at once and he wouldn't move. That pitch down low, 1-0. and Draper working from the stretch. Lead man on, four post 77. Breaking pitch. Inside, 2 and 0. Oh. Brad Seymour is having a pretty good week at the plate. Went one for three in yesterday's win. Actually, that was a couple days ago against Newton, as there's a strike. He's got speed. Third baseman is smelling bunt attempt. Another called strike, 2 and 2. Brad Seymour, overall, having a pretty good season at the plate. Hitting a 308. Gets a piece of this one up the right side, foul. Two and two remains the count. Just a tad late on that swing. I think these post-77 bats are hungry today, Larry. <clears throat> very, very hungry. That pitch low. That'll fill up the count. Good battle going on here between Brad Seymour and Matt Draper. We're going to judge curveballs. Uh, Luke Gustafson has it over Draper so far. Draper deals. And this is sliced up the left side foul. I'm glad that didn't bend left a little more. Well, you jumped out of the way early. <laughs> I was about to do a back dive. Count remains full on Seymour. And he draws the walk. First two on, four post 77. Zach Peston, the first baseman, will step in. Now will Coach Johnson go into his bag of tricks and have Peston bunt. Well, with the way Zach's been swinging, I think you just let him swing away. Earlier in the week, he got some tutoring from Coach Johnson. Zach Peston is three for his last 10. Puts this one up the third baseline. That's a foul ball. <laughs> it's haunted. It really is. Zach Peston, three for 10 this week. Three RBIs, two runs. Having a pretty good week. His brother, John Peston, is three for five with two runs and an RBI. That one inside, one and one. No complaints from Draper, based on his body language. Look good from here. And he'll put this up the right side. That's going to get through the first baseman. And the lead runner are going to be stopped at third. It's bases loaded for post 77 with no outs. 
Cole Glasper and the second baseman stepping in to the left-handed batter's box. Big opportunity here for the Hopkinton Hiller. Glassburn hitting a 217 so far on the season. Inside, 1 0. It looks like Matt Draper maybe having some control issues. I hope so. Looks at third and deals. Check swing held up, 2 0. Make a Draper work here. They'll keep taking until he throws a strike. Here's the 2-0. Slices this one foul, two and one. Here's a 2-1. That one's fouled away, two and two. Well, now he's set up for a curveball. I think that one went on to the top of the uh, press box. But they got that golden retriever. He can go deep in the woods there and get the ball. And this is popped up, and that is going to be caught. One away, bases loaded. Infield fly, I think, was called on that one. I believe so. But here is who you want at the play right now, Ben Thomas stepping in for his second time today. Singled in the first, scored the only run of the game. And that was on a Ronan Bates single, which actually ended up ending the inning as well. Tom Cavanaugh was tagged out trying to score. One and no count on Ben Thomas. Big opportunity here for post 77. And he crushes this ball over to left center. That's going to get down for a base hit. One run is in. Here comes Seymour to score. And the runner behind him is going to be stopped at third. It's a 3-0 post-77 lead. A two RBI double for Ben Thomas. I think Jake Obed was waving Pesson in, but Pesson put yes. the brakes on. Yeah, he ended up stopping at third. Runners on second and third, one out. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, to step in. In a mound visit this early in the game. Certainly surprising if you're a Lowell fan. Matt Draper, one of the elite pitchers on this undefeated Lowell team. In the post 77, though, they have brought the bats here today. Bats were slow last night to wake up. They were down 3 nothing, then dropped 14 spot on Waltham. Well, a good way to start for post 77, as Lewis Rossi will step in. He struck out his last time up. Infield playing in, so his little small ball game may not work, unless we got a suicide. Fouled away. Lewis Rossi just does not give in. The 0 1, the bunt, and he went 0 and 2. He tried that earlier in his first at bat, made a couple bunt attempts. Uh, it looks like they were going for the suicide squeeze there. Will he bunt again here? Nope, he'll swing and drive this all right to the shortstop. He'll step on the second base bag for the double play. Post 77, however, does plate two runs. It's a 3-0 lead as we head to the top of the third on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the third inning, 8-9-1 and one due up for Lowell as Luke Gustafson set to deliver. That one outside, 1-0. One oh. A 3-0 lead for post 77. Two more runs come in in the bottom of the second. There's a strike, one and one. Luke Gustafson in total control so far. That 
one down low. Well, as far as uh, the possibility of rain's concerned, there is a uh, storm that's moving towards us, so we'll certainly keep an eye on that. Hopefully it'll miss us or evaporate. It is pop-up storms as that one's filed away. Two and two. Well, for the fans at home, they ought to shut their windows now. <laughs> for those of you watching live. <laughs> that's filed away. <laughs> two days late on the morning. Oh, we're not live? <laughs> <laughs> There's the 2-2. Two -two. No, he's not wearing a 2-2. Two -two. Fouled. Almost hit one of his uh, teammates getting ready to warm up. Gustafson wants to be efficient with the 8-9 hitter. Fiddle it around in his glove. Maybe he'll throw him the yacker. Nope. Little high. Full count. So speaking about the rain, though, once they're through four and a half innings, it's an official game, but we still have a little bit to go before that point. Line up and the pitch. There's strike three, one away. He knew it. He was running right to the dugout. We'll bring up Max Gilman, the second baseman. Now, they'll play with a little rain, but the big question mark is, will there be thunder and lightning? Because if that happens, this game will be stopped. That one low, 1-0. One oh. Gustafson's curveball has been really sharp. Gustafson set the deal. And this is up the right side foul, 1-1. One and one. I see the sun above that big cumulus cloud. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Oh. A little outside, says the umpire. Lucas wanted that one. I'll tell you, though, I'm liking the strike zone tonight compared to the last couple of nights. I don't know. I thought Cha-Cha-Cha had a pretty good strike zone. That one's fouled away. Hello. Two and two. That woke up his teammates. Put a dent in the ball, I think. I think it put a dent in the dugout. <laughs> Not very sturdy looking, are they? They seem to be holding up well. That's fouled away. Count remains two and two. On the nine hitter. It's been some good battles here tonight, but Gossifson has gotten the best out of most of them. Just low. He needs to finish this kid off. Luke has four strikeouts so far tonight. Most of them coming on the curveball, I think. And that one's sliced foul. The battle continues. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled into the backstop. Count Turn, remains full. Turning into a Mookie Betts at bat here. Well, let's hope it doesn't result in what Mookie Betts did last night. There's nobody on base, so it can't. How's that? Well, okay, something similar. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ball four, says the umpire. A one out walk. That'll bring up the leadoff man, Joey Sanchez, the center fielder. Luke Gustafson had something to say, but uh, this is a family program. Yeah, I didn't agree with that call either. Just when I said the strike zone looked good tonight. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Not on that at <laughs> bat. <laughs> Gustafson from the stretch, slight lead over at first. That one low, 1-0. One oh. Line up in the pitch to the lefty. And this is crushed, hit in the air, over to left field. Backtracking and making the catch is Dom Cavanaugh. Two away, and Gilman stays put at first. 
That looked like a nice dance move out there. Shimmy to the left, shimmy to the right. These outfielders really know how to patrol out there, that's for sure. Edgar Velasquez, the right fielder, will step in. See what the Lowell coach will do with two out. Will he put the runner in motion? That one just outside. Velasquez singled in the first inning and then was caught stealing. Checking at first. Throw almost got away. Nice job by Pesson reeling it in. So a few raindrops continuing the fall. Nothing threatening as of the moment, but there are storms close by as that's fouled away. Uh, and as of right now, they appear to be moving in our direction, but a lot of these storms are uh, quickly appearing and then quickly disappearing. So we're hoping that's the case here. We'll call it a fickle sky. I like it. And this is hit in the air over to left center, and it is caught by Brad Seymour for the third out of the top of the third. To the bottom of the inning we go. Post 77 leading undefeated Lowell. Three to nothing on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the third inning. Three, four, and five do up for post 77. Jackson Horning. Tom Cavanaugh and Ronan Bates to face Matt Draper. And Larry, I understand you have the pitch count update for us. Yes, I do. Um, Draper heading into this inning is at 37, and Gustafson is at 57. Have to keep an eye on that. Certainly will. Of course, Gustafson has thrown another inning more than Draper. There's uh, another strike, 0 and 2. Let's see if Draper settles down. Fouled away. Good, pretty good rally in the second inning for post 77. Sean Jewett was hit by a pitch. Brad Seymour then walked. A single by Zach Pesson. That would load up the bases. Cole Glassburn flew out after that. And then Ben Thomas, two RBI double. As this is hit in the air over to right field, and it's caught by Edgar Velasquez, who can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time, one away. Dom Cavanaugh will step in, the left fielder. Hopefully post-77 can work the count, pitch count up on Draper. Wind up and the pitch. Ooh, that hit him. Plunk in the back. Second hit batter from Matt Draper today. And that'll bring up Ronan Bates. The ball clearly got away from him. There was no way of getting out of that one, too, for Kavanaugh. Not that I think he might have taken one for the team. That one low. Good take by Ronan Bates. Wind up and the pitch. Buck. Ooh. That Draper having some issues out there. Two and O. Oh. Came to the set and made a movement, and that's all it took. Post 77 uh, bullpen just got a warning from the home plate umpire. They don't want any uh, cheering towards a opponent's mistake, which can't blame him. Kind of a sportsmanship thing. But we know Post 77 likes to make a lot of noise and get their teammates pumped up. They better behave than they were last year, I got to tell. They got to tell you. Oh, they certainly are. Winning does a lot. 3 0. Up the middle, and it is gloved by the second baseman. Throw to first. They'll get him. But Kavanaugh does advance to third. So it is 4 to 3 for the second out, and Sean Jewett, the catcher, will step in. Two outs, runner on third. Fouled away. He's hacking. He's not going to get cheated. We 
We had a fan step in, uh, in our way here. That was Metro West uh, Daily News reporter, Jared Keene. Writes some great stuff. Swing and a miss. Sean's going to shorten up a little bit here. Line up and the pitch. Fouled away. One and two. Well, who do you predict in the World Cup game? Uh, I'll go with France. They seem to I mean, yeah, Croatia, great underdog story, but France is a powerhouse. Two and two count on Jewett. When I see you on Monday, I'll give you the Viva la France. Who are you predicting? Croatia. I like it. Just because you're picking France. Here we go. Full count now on Jewett. Jewett was hit by a pitch his last time up. Wow. <laughs> Shift his helmet. <laughs> up high. I guess that's the full count. Excuse me. I misfired on my ball and strike counter here. That everybody can hear in your mic? That's right. Oh and he draws the walk. My goodness. Draper doesn't like that one. The catcher doesn't like that one. Nobody likes that one except for you and me, right? That's right. And all of post-77 fans and players. As Brad Seymour steps in, he walked his last time up. Are they going to send you it and attempt to uh, get in the pickle? That one outside, 1-0. Have Kavanaugh shimmy, shimmy down the third baseline. Low. Two and oh. Brad Seymour hitting a 308 this season coming into this game. 486 on base percentage as we'll get a conference on the mound between pitcher Matt Draper and catcher Johnny Donovan. Wind picking up a little bit here at Ashland Middle School. Is that your day job, a meteorologist? That's right. I'm everything. Storm tracker nappy. Called strike. Dominic Kavanaugh can really stray down the line. Their baseman's not even close. Upstairs. And the checking at third. That hit the runner. Everybody's safe. Ouch. Hit him right in the uh, glutamus maximus. He's, having, he's laughing it off. Jewett didn't manage to advance the second. They're trying to draw the throw up the second there. Nice throw by the catcher and nice play by the third baseman. It's pegged him. <laughs> Indian rubber. And this is up the middle. Glove by the second baseman. Throw to first in time. Four to three for the third out. It's the first inning of the game. Post 77 does not play to run. To the top of the fourth we go. It's a 3 nothing Ashland lead on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the fourth inning, off in the distance, it is pouring rain. But right where we are, it looks like it may be moving towards us now. But it was barely no rain before. But now it's starting to pour off in the distance. Right on my head. head. What, are you, what, are you about? what are you talking about? It's, I'm getting wet. And it looks like for the moment we're going to keep playing. As stepping in is Anderson Jimenez, the shortstop. And here we go. It is pouring, but that it could just be a temporary storm that will stop very soon. The sun is uh, shining on second base area. <laughs> Wind up in the pitch. Outside, 1-0. Oh. Connor's going to be working inside of his sweatshirt for the remainder of this rain. It's expected to move through quickly. So we're going to try to keep things right here. We're not working with electricity, so we should be all right. As this is past the reach of the pitcher, and dropped by the shortstop, picks it up, throws the first, and he, no, not in time. I don't know about that call. Nah, 
And he was safe. Just a little bobble by Jackson. An error there. John Donovan, the catcher, will step in. Well, it looks like we should have brought our raincoats, Larry. Well, you can hear the rain, for those of you at home. But I think it's going to end very, very soon. I think so, and it's actually already stopping. So we're staying with it for the moment. If it continued to get ridiculous, we were done. But <laughs> we'll stay with it for now. Can't replace those $35,000 cameras. That's right. <laughs> I'd like to thank Connor for sacrificing his sweatshirt. He's taking one for the team tonight. Wind up in the pitch. That one outside, one and one. Well, when it's just rain, they try to continue playing. But once the thunder comes, forget it. But right now, no signs of the thunder. He went. There's a strike. No Shane Leary spotted here tonight. One and two. He was a starter on Monday night. Three nothing victory. One two pitch. Outside. Well, that was an unexpected shower. So much for the 0% chance of rain. Upstairs. Full count. A little excitement on this Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Looks at first and deals. Swing and a miss. One away, one on. Thomas Hassett, the first baseman, to step in. He gave him a little extra, extra, extra on that pitch. It's the fifth strikeout of the day for Gustafson. Checking at first, runner back. That was just an I know you're there pickoff move. Don't stray too far. That was an I know you're there rainstorm. As this is tattooed into center field, but Seymour right there to make the catch for the second out. Zach Lishier, the left fielder, to step in. Perfectly played by Brad Seymour. Ball looked like it was heading south. Upstairs. Sean Jewell just wants to pop up and throw another back pick or make an attempt. Runner taking off from first to throw over. Now throw up to second gets by. And he will be safe. Got an injury there at second base. Uh, he's getting up a little slowly, but looks like he's just going to shake it off and he'll be all right. Well, they he, had him picked. They did. Just a bad throw up by uh, Pesson. <laughs> Cloud of dust there is going into my lungs. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs. See what Luke does. Look on the runner back. Looks at second and deals. Swing and a miss. I thought he was going to go to the plate last pitch without giving the runner a look. Did at the very last minute. Looks at second and is set to deliver. Three looks. Just low. Three and one count on Gishier. Struck out his last time up in the second.
And he'll get a piece of this one. What a catch by Zach Passan. Jumps up, rips it out of the air, and that's the third out of the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. It's a 3-0 lead for post-77 on HCAM and WACA-TV. The fourth inning. Wind up in the pitch. And he'll take uh, the hit by pitch. Zach Pesson will march down to first. No, he won't. No attempt. No. It was right at him. What is he supposed to do? I don't know if I agree with that call. Jake Obe doesn't like it. Call it a ball, which it was. We've got a rainbow off in the distance as well after that quick little rainstorm we just had. You know what's at the end of rainbows? Gold. Go find some, Larry. <laughs> Inside, Shin Music, 3-0. Oh. Well, his teammates want him to wear that ball. There's a called strike. Swing and a miss. You know, that call bothers me. The pitch was right at him. Fouled away. Battle continues. Cole Glassburn on deck. Yeah, Zach Pesson uh, singled his last time up in the second. And he'll foul this one up in the air and out of play. Nice try. Good dive by Thomas Hassett, just not able to make the catch. He looked like the Geico guy that skids all the way on his knees on the soccer uh, commercial. <laughs> skids for like 100 yards. Draper deals. Fouled into the catcher. Or maybe the, that was the umpire, actually. I'm not sure why the umpire's out there. It's awful bossy tonight. It certainly is. What, is there some kind of warning there? Uh, what did the pitcher do? Zach Pesson steps back in. And he'll give this one a ride over to center field, but under it and making the catch is Joey Sanchez. One away. Cole Glasper in the second baseman to step in. Luke Gustafson is looking towards the bottom of the Lowell orders. Next inning. Swing and a miss. He foul tipped that one. The 0-1. And this is up the middle. Takes a couple hops. Club by the second baseman. Throw to first. No problem. 4-3 to three on out number two. That'll bring up Ben Thomas, who is having himself a day. Singled in the first. Doubled in the second. That double scored two runs. He also scored the only run for post-77 in the first off an RBI single by Ronan Bates. Ben Thomas hammered a double his last time up. Up and out, 1-0. and oh. Ben Thomas hitting a 441 coming into this game, 535 on base percentage, 500 slugging. As this is foul just above us, and at a play, one and one. Lefty steps back in. Swing and a miss, one and two. Well, looks like Matt Draper has settled down a bit. And he'll get a piece of this one up the right side. Glove by the second baseman. Throw to first. No problem. One, two, three. They go. 
in the bottom of the fourth to the top of the fifth we go. It's a 3-0 lead for Post 77 on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the fifth inning, 7, 8, and 9 do up. To face Luke Gustafson, who is pitching himself quite a game so far. Harrison Silva, the third baseman, steps in. A 3-0 lead for Post 77. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashland Legion Baseball. Airing on WACA TV in Ashland, H. Cam and Hopkinton. Now H. Cat and Holliston. Connor Donovan, our cameraman for this evening's action. Fifth game of the week for post 77. As this ball is sent in the air over to center field and backtracking to make the catch is Brad Seymour. One away, and now that'll bring up Aiden Foyle, the DH. Luke Gustafson's max count he can go is 105 pitches so that one pitch out good for him certainly was there's a ball one and oh low two and oh Back-to-back -back breaking pitches. I don't know why he's not messing, messing around here with the eight hitter. There's a strike, two and one. Just gas him, just like that. There's a strike, two and two. Well, he's set up for a curveball. He knows it, too. Strike three. Got some looking. Two away. Looking for the yakker and get the heat. Max Gilman, the second baseman, will step in. That is the sixth strikeout of the game for Luke Gustafson. Shane Leary and... Luke Gustafson are vying for the best pitch games this year. They certainly are. 1 0 on Gilman. That's inside, 2 0. It would be nice to uh, bookend it. The 3 0 victories on Monday and a Friday. I'm not jinxing or saying anything, but. A few more innings left to go. Inside, 3-0. and oh. And it's a four-pitch walk to Gilman. Second time Max Gilman has walked today. I'll bring up Joey Sanchez, the center fielder. One on, two outs. Looks at first and deals. Swing and a miss. Somebody called time before that pitch? Really? Nope. It was after the pitch. It was because the ball got away, so the ump wanted to make sure the runner didn't try to advance. Because it was partly the ump's fault why the ball fell out of the catcher's glove. Checking out first, runner back safe. A lot of poise Luke Gustafson is showing tonight. Looks at first and throws over. Runner back safe. Pitchers like pickoffs too. He deals. This is foul. 0 and 2. Good hustle by Sean Jewett, jumping out of the box. Two strikes on the hitter. 
from the stretch, looks at first and deals, and this is sliced up the middle right to the shortstop for the third out of the inning, a nice catch by Hornung. And we will head to the bottom of the fifth, post 77, leading undefeated Lowell, three to nothing on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the fifth inning, two, three, and four do up. Lewis Rossi, Jackson Hornung, and Dom Cavanaugh. A three nothing lead for post 77, and they brought Lowell down to their final six outs, but still a couple innings left to go as that pitch just outside. One and oh on Lewis Rossi. Lewis is 0 for 2 today. Takes a strike. Well, it's been uh, quite a pitcher's duel as expected. Lewis Rossi hitting a 242 coming into tonight's action, 342 on base percentage. Fouled away, 1 and 2. Warming up in the pen for post 77 is Andrew Sternick. Of course, we have to watch the pitch count on Luke Gustafson. He's at 84 right now. He's got 21 to go if he has a quick inning. Upstairs. He may be able to get through that inning in a batter or two in the seventh. Now, is that a college pitch count? And there's strike three, got him looking. Ball sails in the left field from the catcher. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, will step in. He's been a little snake bit tonight. Horning is 0 for 2 on the day. Wind up in the pitch. 1 and 0. He's due. Hit the ball hard twice. That one just outside. Two and oh. Oh for two today, trying to change that right here. And he gets a piece of this one over to right field, just past the reach of the second baseman. That's going to be a one out single. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh, the left fielder. That is the fifth hit of the day for post 77. Jackson Horning always a threat to steal. Down low as Johnny Donovan, the catcher, picks it up, looks over at first. Johnny, we hardly knew you, Donovan. Down low, catcher looks over at first once again. Two and O. Oh. There's a strike. If Jackson decides to go, the second baseman will have to take the throw. So the shortstop is playing closer to third. And this is up the right side. Glove by the first baseman. Throw to second for one. The throw back to first. Not in time. Good hustle by Dominic Cavanaugh. So Cavanaugh reaches on the one to four force out. Two away. That'll bring up Ronan Bates, the DH. Draper doesn't agree with the call. He was over there to field his position. And this is sliced in the air right to the shortstop. That'll be the third out of the bottom of the fifth. To the sixth we go. It's 3-0. Ashland leading Lowell on WACA-TV and HCAM. Top of the sixth inning, 2-3 and 4 due up for Lowell. Edgar Velasquez, Anderson Jimenez, and John Donovan. Let's face Luke Gustafson, who is cruising on into the sixth inning. So far, he has given up no runs, two hits. He has struck out six, having himself quite a day. Lined up and the pitch. There's a strike, 0-1 on Velasquez. Coach Johnson would not like nothing more than a quick inning out of Gustafson. 
And this is up the middle, gloved by the second baseman, throws the first, no problem. Four to three on the out. Roll down to their final five outs. Now bring up Jimenez, the shortstop, who is 0 for 2 today, reached on an error in the fourth and got caught stealing. And he struck out in the first. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Luke Gustafson's curveball has been money tonight. Time called by the hitter. Something in the dirt here, Luke. And this is going to take a hop off the dirt. Glove by Rossi at third. Throw to first, no problem. Five to three, four out number two. That'll bring up John Donovan, the catcher. Not a whole lot of hustle out of that hitter. But he gave up on it. If he hustled, it would have been a pretty close play, too. Lou Rossi got the ball before it hit the dirt of the infield. Got a nice hop. Fouled away, 0 oh and 1. Donovan's kind of tall for a catcher. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Ooh, felt the breeze on that one. Yo, two. Swing and a miss, and that is going to be out number three in the top half of the six. Low down to their final three outs as we head to the bottom of the six on HKM and WACA TV. Bottom of the sixth inning, a new pitcher for Lowell Post 87. Chris Ward comes into the game for Matt Draper. Draper went five innings, giving up five hits, three runs, all of them earned, three walks, three strikeouts, and two hit batters. Stepping in for post 77 this inning is six, seven, and eight. Sean Jewett will start things off, followed by Brad Seymour and Zach Pesson. We'll see Look how uh, Chris Ward does coming in for Matt Draper. He did well, Draper, but he was asked to shut it down, and they gave him an exemption for this game. That's Quinnipiac. Well, he was on a pitch count as well, so that's the reason he came out. Did he get to the 105? Well, he was on a college pitch count. I'm uh -huh. not sure what it is. I mean, all, it's all kinds of different rules when uh, players heading to college. The college kind of dictates how many pitches they could throw per game. So whatever. protect their investment. That's right. Two and zero count on Juet. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Two and one. Sean Juet is. 0 for 0 today. He was hit by a pitch and walked. Did score a run in the second on the two RBI double by Ben Thomas. Ward comes down, drops down from the side. Gets a piece of this one up the left side. Glove by the shortstop. Throw to first. Not a problem. Six to three. Four out number one. He's very slick with the glove, the shortstop. I'll bring up Brad Seymour. Brad Seymour, 0 for 1 today. He's walked and grounded out. He also scored on the two RBI double in the second inning by Ben Thomas. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. The 1-0. There's a strike, one and one. With Seymour's speed over the years, we haven't seen him bunt yet. I guess Lewis Rossi's the only bunter. 
This is up the middle, past the reach of the second baseman, a one-out single for Brad Seymour. Want to bring up Zach Pesson, the first baseman. Let's see what kind of move Ward has. Seymour's got really good speed. From the stretch. There's a strike. Ward checks over. Check it at first, runner back safe. Not a bad move. No. Not an A-plus move, though. Ward deals. Runner taking off from first. A throw up is in time. Caught stealing is Seymour. It took that kind of throw to get Seymour. Yeah, that was a great throw from Johnny Donovan. Swing in, foul tip, 0-2. I think if that Metro West rider keeps uh, walking in front of us. Fouled away. Good battle going on here between Zach Pesson and Chris Ward. Infield playing really deep. Swing and a miss. That's out number three. That'll wrap up the bottom of the six. Lull down to their final three outs to the top of the seventh we go. It's 3 nothing post 77 on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the seventh inning. Lowell down to their final three outs. And stepping in is the fifth hitter, Thomas Hassett, the first baseman. Five, six, and seven do up. Thomas Hassett, Zach Gishier, and Harrison Silva to face Luke Gustafson, who remains out there. It has been quite a start for Gustafson. First pitch a ball, one and oh. Six strikeouts for Gustafson on the day. A pitch outside. He's got twelve more pitches before he has to come out. Excuse me, seven strikeouts on the day for Luke Gustafson. He had one last inning. There's a strike, two and one. Not sure what the rule is if he hits 105 in the middle of a batter. Probably let him continue. I'd imagine. And this is going to take a hop on the infield dirt. Love that short throw to first, one away. Six to three on the out. Nicely done. And that'll bring up Zach Gishier. Jackson Hornung making it happen. 077, two outs away from handing Lowell their first loss of the season. 077 has gone to their bread and butter defense, pitching and defense. Inside, 1 0. There's a strike, 1 and 1. You have to expect with that pitch count, Gossifson's going to try to deal a fair amount of strikes. He might as well empty the tank. Swing and a miss, one and two. Not messing around. 
Starting to warming in the pen. Foul tip. Count remains one and two. He had him set up for that curveball. Jewett just couldn't hold on to it. Down low, two and two. Line up and the pitch. And this is tipped up the left side. Slow roller picked up by Rossi. Throw to first. And he is not in time. A one out single. That'll bring up Harrison Silva, the third baseman. And that certainly doesn't uh, help in the pitch count situation. Nice attempt, though, by Rossi. He could just get stuck in his glove a little bit longer than he wanted. Slow roller. There's a strike, 0 and 1. This could be the last batter for Gustafson. I think so. Unless he picks the runner off. That is a foul ball, as said by the home plate umpire. Oh and two. Eats the gas, this hitter. Uh, maybe you can just skew the pitch count a little. <laughs> oh, believe me, Lowell's all over it. Upstairs. I'm assuming it's a college pitch count. No, I'm pretty sure it's American Legion, but... Swing and a miss, two away. Check in at first, runner back safe. He didn't foil the DH, will step in, and that's going to be the hook, I think, for Gustafson. So he gets through six and two thirds. We'll keep things right here as, just to make sure. But we believe that'll be it due to the pitch count regulations John go in. with Luke Gustafson. And Coach Johnson will indeed take the ball. An outstanding start by Luke Gustafson. And we will have a new pitcher for post 77. It's gonna be John Pesson coming into the game to take over on the mound. And he'll try to close it out. This is indeed a save situation as well with it being a three to nothing game. Lowell down to their final out. We'll take a timeout on WACA TV and HCAM. Continuing on in the top of the seventh inning, pinch hitter for Lowell stepping in. And it is... Uh, is it Oscar DeRoma? Oscar DeRoma, sure. Line up in the pitch outside, 1-0. Pinch hitter is Kyle DeRoma. Not getting much support from his bench. One outside, 2-0. Awful quiet. John Pesson in the game to try to close it out. Four post 77, one out away from doing so. Learned himself a nice save as well. This is actually John Pesson's uh, first appearance on the mound for post 77. 3-0. Andrew Sternick warming just in case. There's a strike, three and one. DeRoma was heading down to first base. Got the bad news from the umpire. Set the deal. And that's a walk. Tying run coming into the plate. Two on, two outs. Max Gilman, the second baseman, to step in. Coach Johnson wants a word with Pesson. Well, they had to take Luke Gustafson out due to the pitch count. 
I think Luke definitely had more left in the tank, too. He could have very easily stayed in and completed this game, but due to the pitch count regulations. Rules are rules. Especially some of the college-bound players. You got to do what you got to do. No funny business, back picks, anything like that. Don't want to give Lowell any life at all. John Pesson did pitch a little bit for Holliston. He had a 4.20 ERA in six appearances. Now pitch a ball, 1-0. He pitched 13 and a third of an inning. He's facing the number nine hitter, I think. He is indeed. Is that pitch down low to Max Gilman, the second baseman? 2 and 0. Oh. Two on, two outs. 3 nothing lead for post 77, but time run at the plate for Lowell. There's a strike, 2 and 1. 77 outfielders are playing very, very deep for Gilman. He's signaling him in, it looks like. Inside, three and one. Now I think if you're passing, you just gotta get it over the plate. Let your defense do the work. I concur. There's a walk, bases loaded, two outs. Johnson's gonna go get him. Yep, that's gonna be it, I think. I think Sternick's gonna come in. No room for error here. John Pesson comes out. Joey Sanchez will come up to the plate with bases loaded, two outs. Andrew Sternick, the third pitcher of the game, will come in for post 77. And he'll see if we can close it out. And while he gets ready to pitch, we'll take a quick timeout. Tune in to Ashland Legion Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network, consisting of WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, and HCAT in Holliston. Continuing on with the top of the seven, third pitcher of the game for post 77. Andrew Sternick out there taking over for John Pesson who came in for Luke Gustafson after two outs were recorded due to a hard pitch count for Luke Gustafson. He had to come out after 105 pitches. And there's a strike to the leadoff hitter, Joey Sanchez. Wanted to take a look and see what Sternick had. Line up in the pitch, swing and a miss, so and two. Ashland bench, love that. Got the hook. Late time call by the hitter. Trying to rattle Sternick. The O2 to the lefty. Down low, one and two. Seventy-seven can pull this out. It's a long ride back to low. Sternick delivers. Coach Johnson wanted I, it. I wanted it. Sternick wanted it. I, Jewett wanted it. I absolutely hated that call. Two and two. Terrible call by the home plate umpire. Base hit will pitch. score two runs. Full count. That, that was a strike all the way. I'm sorry, but that was brutal. I don't know if this home plate umpire just wanted to make the game more suspenseful or what. There's a walk, run scores. Three to one. That'll bring up Edgar Velasquez, the right fielder. Bases loaded. I believe Eddie's got a brother on this club. That'd be nice if there was some leniency with the uh, pitch count regulations. You know, when you're in the bottom of the seventh, you got two outs. You should be able to stay out there for at least another hitter or two.
there's a strike. He was taken all the way on that. Sternick set the deal. And this is hit in the air over to center field. Seymour makes the catch, and Ashland post 77 wins the game three to nothing. They hand Lowell post 87 their first loss of the season. And what a game, excuse me, three to one is the final score. That's right, Lowell did play to run in the top of the seventh, a three to one final as Ashland post 77 hands Lowell their first loss of the season. Lowell falls to 10 and one overall. Ashland post 77, now 11 and three. And they are just one and a half games back of first place. So it is certainly possible that post 77 could take first place before the season's out with the victory here today. Got a little scary in that top of the seventh, but a great job by Andrew Sternick pulling off the save and getting that final out to secure the victory and a brilliant pitching performance by Luke Gustafson. Luke went six and two thirds of an inning, giving up three hits, no runs, two walks, seven strikeouts. Luke Gustafson, your player of the game as Ashland post 77 takes down Lowell by a final score of three to one. Ashland scores three runs on six hits and commits one error. They leave six on base. As far as Lowell is concerned, they scored one run on three hits and left seven on base. The final score for the final time, Ashland defeats Lowell by a final score of three to one. Ashland now 11 and three on the season. Lowell drops to 10 and one overall. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network, consisting of WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, HCAT in Holliston. Have a good night, everybody, and we'll talk to you again soon. Tom Nappy alongside Luke Gossifson, today's winning pitcher. Luke, a tremendous start by you. Six and two-thirds of shutout baseball. How does it feel to have that kind of performance against a great team like Lowell? Uh, it's good. I mean, we wanted to show the other teams in the league that uh, we're, uh, we're, the, we're the top of this league. Just because they're undefeated doesn't mean they're better than us. Uh, just went out there looking to throw strikes. Uh, let my team make some plays in the field, and uh, that's what we did today. So, You just seem to be feeling it out there today. That curveball looked nasty. Uh, could you just talk about how you felt going into this game? Yeah, I mean, warming up in the bullpen, I could definitely feel it. It was moving a lot. So, uh, you know, I could throw it for strikes. I could throw it 0-2 down low. I was just trying to work it different locations and stuff like that. And I uh, felt good early on, so I just kept with it and turned out all right. And some nice plays made, as usual, by the defense. Yep. Uh, can you talk about the guys playing behind you today? Yeah, uh, I mean, when you're pitching and you have the defense that we have behind us, it's, it's much easier. Um, you know, you don't have to strike. You have to try to strike everyone out. You can, um, you know, if you're down the count, not necessarily try to come all the way back. Just hit a ground ball because you know you have the defense behind you to make plays. So, so good to that. And you guys seem to have a lot of fun playing together. Uh, can you talk about what it's like to play with this group? Yeah, I mean, we definitely have a lot of team chemistry. We're all from. It's different because we're all from different towns, but um, we have a lot of good kids on this team, and we all work together. So uh, it's a lot of fun playing with these guys. All right, well, congratulations on a great performance out there today and looking forward to the rest of the season and hopefully a long postseason. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it.